Deep in the history of Seattle's establishment, Marianne Conklin became the first mother of the city's economy. Marianne was born in 1821 in Pennsylvania, and in 1851, she met and married David W. Conklin, who was the captain of a ship in Russian America and Alaska. In 1853, while on a trip to Washington, he ditched her in Port Townsend and he sailed away back to Alaska. She moved to the then small town of Seattle and found a job managing the Felker House, an inn belonging to Captain Leonard Felker. The Felker House was the first hotel of Seattle and was moved to Jackson Street and First Avenue. Although she ran the place with clean sheets and good food, it was for her salty language that she became known for. Travelers along the coast were amused with her ability to use profanity in English, Spanish, Portuguese, Chinese, French, and German. She also carried rocks in her apron, supposedly flinging them away at people as she cursed, thus giving her the nickname Mother Damnable. With this, the Felker House became later known as the Conklin House. The popularity of the Conklin House also increased because on the second floor she ran a brothel. This would eventually change her identity from Mother Damnable to Madame Damnable along the travelers and sailors. An officer of the Navy, Thomas S. Phelps, called her a demon and in his memoirs he described his encounter with her. The moment our men appeared upon the scene with three dogs at her heels and an apron filled with rocks, this termagant would come tearing from the house, and the way stones, oaths, and curses flew was something fearful to contemplate, and charging like a fury, with the dogs wild to flesh, their teeth in detested invaders, the division invariably gave away before the storm, fleeing officers and all, as if old Satan himself was after them. Mary Ann Conklin died in 1873 and was originally buried in the Seattle Cemetery. This cemetery would flood, causing the gravestones and coffins to bump against each other underground. Between 1883 and 1884, the graves were relocated to other cemeteries, converting the old cemetery into Denny Park. In 1884, the former undertaker, Oliver C. Shorey, dug up Mary Ann Conklin's grave. Upon lifting her from the ground, he felt the coffin too heavy. He called five others to help lift it, and once out, they opened the coffin. Shorey described what he experienced in the Seattle post Intelliger from August 22, 1884. We discovered that the coffin was very heavy, weighing at least 400 pounds, and it took six men to lift it out of the grave. On removing the lid to the coffin, we found that she had turned to stone. Her form was full-sized and perfect, the ears, fingernails, and hair being all intact. Her features were, however, somewhat disfigured. Covering the body was a dark dust, but after that was removed, the form was as white as marble and as hard as stone. Despite her temper and unpleasant language, Marianne Conklin paved the way to Seattle's development, providing companion men to loggers, miners, fishermen, and sailors. With the city's early stages of development, the Conklin House brought an impressive revenue, thus respect from the city. Her example paved the way to one of the city's major pioneers, Lou Graham, the queen of the lava beds. <laughs> 